Hi, I'm Professor Erin Cowling. I'm a professor of Spanish and Humanities at McEwen University. And hi, I'm Professor Edna Avalos. I am also a professor in Spanish at the Department of Humanities. And we are here today to talk about our research. And I would like to ask uh, Dr. Cowling what her research is about. Um, we found that we have uh, one topic in common. So we are going to talk about that today. So Dr. Kaling, could you um, explain about your research? I understand that you are going to publish a book about it. So could you tell us a little bit about it? Sure, thank you. Yeah, so generally I work on early modern Spain um, and particularly I'm interested in theater. So I always tell people that what I do is kind of like reading Shakespeare, but in Spanish. Um, but right now what I'm working on is a book manuscript on how chocolate started to appear in early modern Spanish literature because chocolate was not known on the European continent until the um, Spanish went to the Americas and found this bean that they couldn't figure out why people were so excited about it, right? So at that time, chocolate was mostly a drink, right? The beans were used sometimes even as money, but really it was a drink that they used in ceremonies, um, religious rituals, and things like that. And when the Spanish conquistadors found it, they thought, what is this thing? They didn't like it so much. They thought it was kind of bitter um, and didn't taste that good. But when they took it back to Spain, it became very popular very quickly, right? With that popularity came some difficulties, particularly with the church that didn't want people drinking chocolate during masses. They thought that that was problematic, uh, especially when they were doing things like um, fasts for their religious, for religious reasons. They thought chocolate gave people too much energy and would give them too much ability to go out and do things that, when they should just be sitting at home contemplating life. Uh, they also had some concerns about the medical uses of chocolate um, because it was seen as a medicine, especially in the Americas at that time. And they were worried that Spanish people wouldn't be able to digest it properly and that it would somehow affect their bodily functions. Okay. How about you? What are you working on that might be related to that? Because we do very different things sometimes, but... Yes, yes. So I am working on a novel that it's called um, like Lupita Liked Ironing and it's a 21st century novel about a police woman who solves a crime right but this woman uh, it's very human she has a disability you know uh, with alcohol so in this case uh, the the drink you know, that it's problematic here is alcohol, but it's also, as you said, it's like a part of, um, it's a way to get in touch with herself to escape reality. And in this book, we find that there are some uh, pre-Hispanic uh, rituals intertwined in the book. Suddenly, the writer, Laura Esquivel, starts talking about different rituals in order that indigenous people from Mexico City, the Aztecs, used to connect with themselves, uh, not through alcohol, but they also use other substances. Um, and uh, at the end, uh, well, Lupita finds that there is this way, like in a pre-Hispanic uh, context, you know, to connect with herself. And she struggles to quit alcohol but at the end, she, she connects with herself and with others through these rituals. And it's interesting because I can connect uh, even with all these centuries. No? There are always these um, foods or drinks that are used by people and that helps us, um, like in this case, no? with rituals, proper rituals, to connect with others, to connect with, uh, with ourselves. And this is like um, this is like uh, Lupita's trip, you no, know, through through her life, you no. Know? It's how she develops 
uh, as a person, no, and how she struggles to um, to quit her addictions, no, and uh, to turn to other substances, no. But it's it's different, no, because mm -hmm. it's not just an escape, but it has a purpose, no. And it's interesting because chocolate, I think, it can be also used as that, no, as part of. Um, uh, yeah, it certainly was. And it's interesting too, sometimes these things, like the rituals that you're talking about towards the end of Lupita's story, they, when they're not understood, they're seen as taboo or problematic, right? Like chocolate even, which we just think of as an everyday thing. You know, everybody has a little bit of chocolate once in a while. We just passed Valentine's Day. You know, chocolate's a big part of our lives. But four or 500 years ago, when they didn't know a lot about it, it was seen as potentially damaging to one's health or interrupting one's, you know, re religious ritual from the, from the point of view of the church, right? And so even these rituals that are still taking place in certain parts of Latin America today um, are seen in other parts of the world as, as taboo or as you know, problematic. Do you want to talk a little bit more about the rituals that she takes part in? Um, yeah, sure. So in this case, they talk about um, how to create like a mirror, like when they are uh, smoking and they are praying, you know, in this kind of ritual. Um, she was a victim in all of this when she was trying to find out who uh, an assassin was, you no. Know? She is um, fleeing and she finds refuge with this uh, indigenous community, no? And the indigenous community is the one who helps her to um, overcome all of her uh, addictions and the problems, no? And show her uh, reality. So they, they, they pray together they, uh, to the ancient gods, of the Nochtitlan, no, of the Aztecs. And suddenly she finds out that she doesn't need anything else because she is connected with everyone. No? So she is, uh, at the end she finds herself. And it's interesting to how we can recover these things and like the chocolate that you, that you mentioned is now part of our lives. And this, uh, in this case, like Lupita is trying to recover what was left behind, you no, know, with civilization and all these things, all these thoughts, and to make it part of her life, like, like ordinary part of her life, you know? like to recover those traditions. I mean, very cool. Yes. So that's <laughs> that's part of my research. Nice. All right. Yeah. Well. I think uh, if people have questions, they can always find us. Um, not so much in our offices this year, but hopefully soon enough. Uh, but on the website, if you want to send us email, you can certainly find us there. Yes. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.